BNC, 100% black and brown host all day. Finally, news that speaks to us. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Judge, Your Honor, it's very good to see you. Forgive me when you were in my office. Uh, you were focused on the hearings and a lot of the substance and had such great questions. I could not stop being just joyous that you were sitting in my office, and I couldn't stop bringing up to you the historical nature of this. Forgive me, I grew up in a small black church where I was taught uh, to make a joyous noise unto the Lord. And this is not a normal day for America. We have never had this moment before. And I just want to talk about uh, the joy. I know tomorrow and the coming hearings, we're going to have tough, hard questions. But please, let me just acknowledge the fact that this is not normal. It's never happened before. The Senate is poised right now to break another ba barrier. We are on the precipice of shattering another ceiling, another glass ceiling. It's a ceiling. It's a sign that we, as a country, are continuing to rise to our collective cherished highest ideals. I, I, I just feel this sense of overwhelming joy as I see you sitting there, as I see your family sitting behind you. You know, the greatness of America is that these imperfect geniuses at our founding founded a nation different than any before on, in human history. It wasn't because we all prayed the same or looked the same. They put forth in a constitution the best hopes for humanity and the story of America, I think, is a testimony to this world of what diverse people can achieve. It's been said by so many of my colleagues about the fact that we have had 115 Supreme Court justices, and we shouldn't diminish the accomplishments of mostly these 108 white men. They were extraordinary patriots who helped shape this country. But now we are seeing to the highest court in our land a hopeful day like this. That, that so many of the people, so much of the rich talent of our nation, who could not scarcely ever dream of sitting on the Supreme Court, now we are showing that we will indeed d go deep into the waters of our nation and pull forth the best talent. Extraordinary legal talent comes from all backgrounds. I know that in our nation, for the 200 plus years of our history, there have been extraordinarily talented black people, men and women, Muslim men and women from the founding of our nation. We've seen extraordinary indigenous men and women, all who probably could have added to the greatness of our courts, but they were denied that opportunity. I believe we say these words, justice for all, but there are many of people who feel those words have been diminished by the lack of representation, the lack of avenues for talented people to ascend to our courts. But fortunately, thanks to the sacrifices of all Americans, people on both sides of the political aisle, we have begun to see more and more diverse Americans slowly get on to our federal courts. My family celebrated that. I was born in 1969, the year that President Johnson nominated Thurgood Marshall, the first African-American to serve on the Supreme Court. It shook the wonderful foundations of our nations, and he became a symbol to all of us, black and white, of what a Supreme Court justice can be. And then Ronald Reagan, 1981, roughly 200 plus years since the founding of our nation, put Justice Sandra Day O'Connor. That was not a normal moment. It was a moment to rejoice and now we've seen President Obama put Justice Soto, Soto, Sonia Sotomayor, the first Hispanic on the court. And what I'm seeing in this Congress, my colleagues and I, doing is we are opening the doors of diverse talent to our federal courts in ways we've never seen before. Think about this. President Biden has nominated the first ever Article III Muslim judge to our federal courts. He nominated the first openly LGBTQ woman to serve on our federal courts. He nominated Native American and Asian American candidates who have appeared before this committee, incredibly talented individuals worthy of their positions, now act in roles to the benefit of our whole nation. They herald the truth of who we are as a country, an inclusive, multicultural nation that shows the world the promise of a true democracy. In all, over two-thirds of the confirmed judges under the Biden administration have come from groups who historically have not been represented on our federal courts. So for this, those reasons and more, today to me is a day of joy. I cannot tell you how happy I am 
Today, we should rejoice because President Biden nominated someone that we've heard to be the 116th associate judge of the Supreme Court who is extraordinarily talented and who also happens to be a black woman, something we've never seen before. Judge Jackson's nomination breaks an artificially confining mold of our past and opens up a more promising potential-filled future for us all as Americans. It signals that this nation will draw more deeply from all of our talent and genius that will benefit all Americans. This is the America that most of our families speak of from all our diverse backgrounds, an America where anybody can achieve anything, not because of the color of their skin, but because of the content of their character. And God, I can't wait for America to find out more about your character. When the next generation behind us looks at the highest courts in the land, this ideal will made, be made more real in even just the faces of the nine. You bring this wealth of experience that's exciting to me. You've seen so many parts of our legal system, but I just wanna talk about you, your role as a public defender because that too is unprecedented. I have a friend uh, that, my, uh, that just was at the uh, prayer breakfast here in Congress, Brian Stevenson. He has this saying, he says, we have a justice system that treats you better if you're rich and guilty than if you're poor and innocent. I'm not sure if most Americans know that 80% of those who go before our nation's criminal courts can't afford an attorney. To this end, a public defender should be looked at as one of the most honorable roles within our judicial system, and yet we have never had a public defender or anyone who served as a public defender on our highest court. And it unfortunately is very lacking amongst all federal judges. You wrote, uh, Judge, that the role of the public defender made you a better judge. You said it gave you a chance to, quote, help people in need and to promote core constitutional values. Well, the Sixth Amendment right to the assistance of counsel is guaranteed regardless of wealth and despite the nature of the accusations. I, I honor that more than you know as someone who started in legal clinics at Yale. I had my empathy expanding. And that week, there was a man named Martin Luther King who began on this day a march from Selma to Montgomery. And when he finally made it on the 25th of March, he talk to people who are losing faith in America, that we can be who we say we are. And he says for those folks, how long will we have to wait? Not long because the arc of the moral universe is long and it bends towards justice. Well, today America is witnessing the literal bending of the arc and the conducting of one of the most sacred ideals of this country, justice for all. I think more people at the end of these hearings and after a Senate vote, more people will believe that we can be the nation we say we are when we put our hand on our heart. Indeed, I think you and your family are giving a lot more people faith that we will achieve a nation of liberty and justice for all. Thank you.